All right, welcome to a very special video segment here. We have Coach Norv Turner here, a very special guest. But Coach, I don't even think you're a guest. You're here in our uh, command center. You're not usually here on Sundays. You got other things going on. But Coach Turner is an investor and really uh, on the advisory board and part of Sports Injury Central. Look, he's even got the shirt on here. And we rely on him. So we do the injury analysis and we rely on Coach and others to help with the algorithms, like the effect of cluster injuries and the percentages and so forth and how football works from a football perspective. So our scores, injury scores are our scores, but the six score takes into effect things like cluster injuries. So I'll start off by asking you, O-line clusters are one of the things that have made us hit very well with the picks and so forth. And not naming names, and because I know you have friends throughout the league, and we don't want we deal in insider knowledge, not insider information. But let's take the Rams for example. They're clearly struggling on the offensive line. They're they're on center three, right guard three, left guard two, and now they lose Noteboom, who's left tackle one. You could argue left tackle two. They never replaced fully replaced Whitworth in a bye week, which the Rams have. Can you even fix those problems? Uh, how do you even go about it? I, I really, you know, the problem is where the replacement's coming from. Uh, is some, are some of the guys that are out? Are you going to get them back pretty soon? Can you can you piecemeal it and and hang on? Uh, you know, my last year with the Chargers, you know what happened. We we lost three or four starters. We lost the left tackle. Uh, and Philip was a guy that needed to be protected. He wasn't going to take off and scramble and move. And there's teams now that remind me of that that situation we were in. And obviously the Rams were one of them, and you saw it early in the season, and then you saw it as the season went on. And uh, Stafford's a guy that, that needs to be protected. He, he's not going to and, and, sustain. And, 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 and up the middle. It's no one question. thing if – the left tackle gets beat and he can step up and throw the ball. But if the pressure is coming up the middle, that's even harder for an immobile quarterback, right? We know that about Brady. We know that about others. And we've seen like Daryl Henderson this last week almost look like a personal protector lining up in front of Stafford. No question. And and I I was, uh, I went to the Thursday night Washington Chicago game and I know a lot about Washington, uh, obviously with, with my son there and, and coach Rivera, but uh, I'm not giving away any secrets. They, they're they going through three centers. They're on their fourth. They've gone through three right guards, two right tackles. Uh, first of all, the continuity in the offensive line, we know how important it is. And then the ability to perform. Uh, you know, they played Tennessee, and and that defensive tackle, 98, you guys would give me his name. I know you're all over it. Uh I mean, they moved him around and got the great matchup. Uh, and then I went to the Charger game on Monday night. And when you see it in person, and they've had so many injuries in the offensive line, and, uh, you know, Herbert running for his life throughout a lot of the game. And uh, he's unbelievable. He, he, he uh, another guy might have been sacked six or seven times. He avoids those sacks, but you don't get any continuity. You don't get any rhythm on offense. Uh, the quarterback needs a running game uh, to help him getting those situations that, that are prime situations. And, uh, you know, if your offensive line can't protect, you're struggling. No question. The Rams were without uh, Rashawn Slater, left tackle. Corey Lindsley, pro bowler, food poisoning. And then all of a sudden the whole line fell apart. And uh, as we mentioned before, 57 passes for like three some yards average. I mean, that uh, that's that, pretty uh, amazing when you have a guy like Herbert and they're, they, they're, uh, they're normal yards, uh, targets, target yards is low anyway but then when you have protection problems and you have you know they're not going to get a lot of yards per attempt and herbert his strength is being able to throw that ball up the field i think another injury that we all know keenan allen is his guy and right. i think they would be a lot different with keenan allen uh but the combination of the protection problems and then keenan being out it's it's a tough combination yeah, especially when Sertain locks down Mike Williams, so you don't even have that option, uh, you know, there. So 
the way I interpreted Coach Turner, we go back a long ways, and and he's he's always a nice guy, very very uh, words things the right way. So the answer to that question that I asked, I believe, is a bye week isn't going to help you fix much unless you you can use the bye to get somebody back the only one that might come back is the center coming off a knee scope and he's been slow the right guard broke his leg is out for the season and they're down to right guard three they're on center three they could get center one back and that could help the left guard is on ir with concussion so will definitely be out and note boom tore his achilles and is definitely out so the only chance for help with the rams is at the center position otherwise unless they're picking up someone who's on the couch or from the practice squad there's not a lot of help coming other than the center brian uh, uh allen the center coming back from the nisco and that's not a guarantee yeah and everyone says well you got to buy you got some time you can put some new schemes in you can chip that you can ha- have a tight end help you you there's things that all offensive coaches know you can do but those things dry up pretty fast and it doesn't take long for defenses to figure out what you're doing too and they adjust on the move and you can do some things to piecemeal and help it for a few plays or maybe for half a game uh but it's okay it comes down to personnel so coach let's go to the second topic here it dovetails well from what what you can do with offensive line cluster injuries let's say you make a trade in season to help the offensive line or let's talk about mid-season trades for example um robbie anderson comes to arizona uh or not even a trade deandre hopkins allison is activated or if cam Akers is traded or cmc how hard is it to acclimate a guy whether it's an offensive lineman or a robbie anderson or you name it in a mid-season trade like for example robbie anderson got traded we're recording this on Wednesday. Is he playing on Thursday? And and if he does, can you ever even get him to do anything? You know, to me, it depends on the guy. And there's some guys that come in and they they don't get caught up in, oh, God, i got to learn a whole new system. Uh, you, you give them a, a set of plays. They're, they're comfortable. They know how to play. Uh, and they, they move in and, and are fine. Uh, you, have a, you have a small little – package for them uh but some guys uh it takes time and and that's the problem we talked about back to the offensive line it, those guys are in there and working together with your plan guard you're working with left it's, tackle you're working with a center you see now all these teams running three-man games because they know there's a guy in there who hasn't worked with a guard so i think i think the secondary and the offensive line are the toughest place, places to really get a trade and then have a guy have an impact. So for a wide receiver, you could see a package of plays. Okay, we're only going to call these six plays for you, and we're going to run them a couple times, and you can do no, something. No but the question. offensive line is a different I'll story. I'll give you an example because you'll remember it. Uh, he had had the bad knee injury. Uh, Alexander, Don, he, he was he played at Missouri, played at St. Louis. We He was a free agent. He was on the street. We signed him in 2012 and he ended up catching 60 balls in, in, in the last seven games and had a 16 yard average and he became Phillips go-to guy uh, but he was on the street because he had a severe injury and then when he came in he we gave him hey these are your routes here's the adjustments don't worry about the play we'll put the other guys Philip could t- tell him what to do in the huddle it was a unique situation but you know those things happen all right so Talk about adjustments and playing together. Uh, Taylor, what was the game I was mad at you, the Colts Thursday night against um, Broncos. Broncos? When the Colts played the Broncos on Thursday night, we did the six scores, we did the team stuff, we did the algorithm. And I said, easy money, the Colts are going to win by a lot, just looking at the injuries. And we get to the game on a Thursday, mind you, and the entire offensive line is shuffled. And I'm calling Taylor going, what happened? What injuries did you miss? I mean, like, how are we so wrong on what's happening here? And the offensive line was horrific. But to your point, I was shocked they did that on a short week. I get it. Maybe their line wasn't doing well. But 
to do that on a short week is very, very difficult. You know, put in a rookie like it and whatever. Maybe they had the other reasons. But I, at first, I was mad at Taylor because like, you're missing injuries. Yeah, What's going there, on there, here? Something had to happen. But, you know, we did. We still won that. Okay, yeah. but by, but it wasn't I, that comfortable. By, uh, yeah, I, I remember the game. It was no one knew who was going to win. It, it yeah, didn't look we, like anyone was going to win. We want. We want. We won and covered, but it, we were sweating it. And I was, but at least it wasn't Taylor's fault. But it speaks to your point on a, on a short week. Well, that's like the end of the Washington Chicago game. I'm sitting in the end zone, in a, and we're in a suite and looking down. And you know, they they miss Washington misses a field goal late in the game, and I'm going, uh oh. And then he, uh, Fields breaks the long run, and they're on a four, and I'm going, this can't be happening, you know. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> Washington wins, and when it's over, you're saying, "Oh, that was easy." You know, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. All right, Coach, uh, you, you're very really helpful for us for the algorithms and your insight into football, I and mean, we just do injuries. Let's chat for a minute on quarterbacks. Now, you've had a lot of great quarterbacks in your time, from Troy Aikman on to Philip Rivers, and that's almost a different story when you have those guys. And Philip never got hurt, so there was no quarterback carousel or. No, that take it back. You yeah, know, know he got we hurt. Know he got hurt. <laughs> but we know I mean, the story. Torn ACLs and then, he you know, went ribs. Back, but he would play about through. The most dependable guy in terms of being able to play every week and play through tough and, situations. Uh, and nobody just, better. And just for the record, I've told this story before, but since you're here right now, after Philip tore his ACL in the final game at the RCA Dome and we won and we're headed to the AFC Championship game against New England – we met we knew he had an acl tear we he said he wanted to play we met you me philip and the head athletic trainer and you explicitly said philip we've got this take care of your knee billy volick will take care of this and rest it and the biggest fallacy i always tell people is it's always like oh the team the owner the coach forcing you to get a, a player back it's really not that been that way at least in my experience that was a very clear incidence of the only person forcing me to get him back was philip himself and willing to take some risk in the knee scope you were saying that ownership never said anything to me the gm never said anything to me they know we're just going to do what's right you're the one in front of philip said no 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 you take care of yourself we'll we'll handle this and, and the information i mean it wasn't it was it wasn't you have to be smart as the coach it wasn't because philip wanted to play so bad we played him the information we got was he's going to have surgery when the game when we're done playing and he's not gonna he can't you know chances are he's not gonna yeah. injure this to a more for, to a further degree and he had such a command of our team and he actually uh the one interception he thrown through if you go back and look at it, it was a leg whip uh on on the play and it should have been a penalty and we should have had the ball first and 10 and yeah you know you can't go back and, and change those but uh he he competed and, and played good in the and, game. and to be fair we did the scope right after you know we made that decision and he played six days later but philip we love you but he's not the most mobile guy in the world no. so if we could get away with that a little bit there yep. uh you know if he's not it, 100%, the, the, the only the issue game. was it's it's uh you get in those situations, and and we were inside the. It, it, unfortunately, we got to the ten, or our, our first and goals were on the ten, on the eight, that type of thing, and they were not gonna. They weren't worried about Philip running anywhere. So when it got to pass situations, they they dropped everyone in the end zone. And yeah, and and there's another piece of this. I don't know that I've ever told you the score story, but I think it's worth telling. And it's a little. We don't have a script, but it wasn't the plan. But it's always fun to just chat. Remember, the Patriots were undefeated that year, leading up to that point in time. And we were not undefeated to start the season. And I remember Junior, Junior Seau, coming back on a bye week, and they were undefeated. And obviously, he was playing with the Patriots at the time. And playing well. Playing well. And, and we talked at his restaurant, and I said, look, buddy, go get your Super Bowl. Go get your ring. I said, I said, my goal at this point, because we weren't doing that well, is let's just make the playoffs yeah. and see what happens. And his goal is to win the Super Bowl. They were undefeated. 
So after the game, and you know, a lot happened that game, AFC Championship, whatever. And we were really banged up from LT to Gates to like we had seven Pro Bowlers injured that game. Whatever is yeah. what it is. We win, and remember the key play was third down. I, rem- I can see it <laughs> right on the right side over there. Yeah, and Junior shot the gap right. And uh, 50 power, you know, Michael Turner stopped us, kicked the field goal, then New England came down and scored, and, and the game was over. Scored. And, and the, the biggest thing on the play, uh, there's a double team where there's someone assigned for Junior. Junior's been running through that gap uh, since he was eight years old probably. Uh, and if, if, we, if we come off and get Junior, there is no one out in front of Michael Turner. It's a walk into the corner of the end zone, well, and, and that's football. And that's uh, I, I you did, know those I plays did, happen. I did ask on the plane ride home, and I'm not going to say any names. I asked one of the offensive linemen. All I said was, "What happened on that play?" And I didn't even have to specify the play. Okay, and he said uh, he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's Junior's well, that's career. Junior, right? no <laughs> that's question. Junior's career. Like, like you know this. He would study. One of the best things is his locker at the Hall of Fame, right? He would have that end locker. He'd have all those plays up there. And I remember asking Junior this once. Buddy, you know, why do you jump off sides? People say, give you some criticism. Or like that. Yeah. He goes, look, I'm not trying to tackle a guy for a two-yard gain. I'm trying to change the game. So if there's a... In some ways, like doubling down in blackjack. When something is to your advantage, you push all in and you go for it. And there, he's like, they're going to run 50 power. I'm just going to, I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm going to shoot the gap and do it. And he did. It's great players, and they've been doing it forever. And and the guy that we always had to play against, uh, Troy in Pittsburgh, Paolo, I can't say Oh, Palomalo, yeah. Palomalo. I mean, he he drove people crazy because he had a, he had a free reign. And he could go any gap he wanted to, and he could time out the quarterback's cadence. And he he was a nightmare. And he he every once in a while he may give up a play, but he made a lot of plays doing that. So the follow up on that story is the game's over, and there's a lot of fanfare. I did get a chance to give Junior a quick hug, and I said to him, June, as a buddy, remember our, when you were back for the bye week? He said, Yeah. I said, I got my dream for the season. We made the playoffs. Yeah you go get yours, win that Super Bowl, right? And he looked at me and he said, aloha. And I was like, I didn't even know what that meant. And I walked off the field and then I figured it out. This is how quick Junior is. He was saying, enjoy the Pro Bowl. Yeah, That was when the Pro Bowl was after the Super right. Bowl. And if you if you were in the championship game, you, you went get, and- You get to go and, to the Pro and Bowl. And coached it. And we, uh, we had beat Indianapolis and- Sproles had caught all those screen passes, yeah. and Leggett and Nane had a big screen pass, and we hit like five screen passes against them. And we go to coach at Pro Bowl, and I'm, I didn't do it very often, but I'm on the treadmill, and I look over, and next to me is is Peyton Manning, who we had beaten in the in the divisional round to go to the, to the championship game, and Peyton looks over at me and says. Are we going to run any of those screens you guys ran against us in the Pro Bowl? <laughs> I said we'll have a few. <laughs> yeah, we could get into some some uh, Peyton stories. That Pro Bowl was uh, interesting. I mean, uh, uh, my my wife who went with me, like three day, four days later, she walking by the pool by herself, ran at Peyton, and Peyton said her name, and like it, like. That was her boyfriend from then from then on. That guy's amazing. But the follow up of the final story, he says, "Loha Junior." I don't even know what that means, and I figure it out yeah. when I'm on the bus. We're on the bus and somber, and, and I texted Junior, "Congratulations," and I said, "But why does your signature play have to be against the Chargers?" And he texted back saying, "I think you're right. That is my signature play." I mean, it was a run stop that he shot the gap on, and he's yeah. like, "That's what he's about, changing the the Change game." Changing game, yeah. And uh, so he actually agreed by text uh, on that. All right, so enough sidetracking. So let's chat a minute here, okay, on quarterbacks. We talked about Philip. That's how we got off on the sidetrack here. This week, seven teams will have a quarterback carousel. We talked about it earlier in the week. We did not call you on it because one of the carousels involved 
Washington commanders, and we would never do that to you with your son Scott being the offensive coordinator. But it's pretty clear that Wentz wasn't going to play, and now it's going to be Taylor Henneke, et cetera. So that's one of them. But Dak Prescott, we talked earlier, it's not just about being able to spin the ball and play and throw accurately. You have to be able to follow through and not risk refracture because they can't afford to lose him for another six weeks. But it's also about ball security. Like when you get sacked and you know, stripping the ball and, and whatever. So the, all that in six weeks is what we said, he's going to return. We're, we know Dak's going to be fine and play. But what about other quarterbacks? For example, uh, Tua coming back from his concussion just one week of practice. They, he cleared for the game. They didn't play him. Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi. He's not 100%. How's that decision going to work? Or even in, look, in a Thursday night game, Dalton, Winston, whichever one's healthy. We think it's going to be Dalton will start. But even in Carolina, Baker Mayfield finished the game with a high ankle sprain played two and a half quarters and then the next week it was pj walker and obviously they fired their coach and it was a lot of turmoil this week who's the quarterback they could go back to baker mayfield pj walker didn't do much of anything they PJ oh they did already okay well that's my other question sam darnold just got activated off of injury off of injured reserve to this practice window could you, is it even conceivable that you can get – how long does it take to get a quarterback ready after you come back? Uh, yeah, you know, when it's a guy who's uh, – you know, let's talk about uh, the guy who's a long-term starter like Dak. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not a big change, and sometimes those guys come in and have really big games because they're fresh, they've been seeing it from the sideline, they're, they're anxious to go play, uh, you know, depending on where your team is, the matchup, I know – Dallas is another team that's struggled with some old line problems. Uh, my my feeling is sometimes these guys, and we went through it with Kyle Allen my last year uh, when Cam got hurt my last year in Carolina. Some of these guys come in and they play pretty good for three or four weeks. Uh, I think uh, Dallas is a good example, but de defenses start getting a feel for them and understand them and. All of a sudden, they they can't do what they do best. They have to be able to play a complete game. And we were five and one with Kyle, and then it just kind of he struggled from that point on. And people, you know, pressured him a little bit more, changed up coverages a little better. Uh, and I think you see that. So everyone gets excited when a guy comes in and has the two or three games. I, I know. Uh, after uh, in Dallas, they were saying, "Well, can this guy beat out Dak? Or, or they, should they go back?" Well, it, four weeks later, you know, fourth week into it, you're saying, "Well, he's done a great job keeping us in this thing, but it's time we need to we need to make that move." Uh, so I never get I never get that. I learned from Ernie Zampezi. I never get that excited when a young guy goes in and has two or three games because it's a it's a long process uh new england has an interesting deal because i like um the with the funny name zappy you know zappy zappy i like him uh and he's given him a spark so now you're kind of you know maybe maybe wait mac until you're 100 percent. yeah normally if Zappy's not doing well 80 percent, let's go yeah now let's wait till you're 100 85 to 90 right yeah, well, in his eyes, yeah. <laughs> right? That's and, the translation. Coach, I'm good enough to play. I'm lobbying to play. But if you sit me, I have, I say face, I'm not 100%, right? I mean, uh, he, but if a player says he's 85 to 90, he's about 70. Well, and we, right? I mean, we, we, we all know now, you know, we all have good memories and, and blood. So sprained his ankle and uh, young Brady oh, went yeah. in there and all of a sudden uh, he's he continued to play and play and play for like 20 Two years, so I mean, I, it'll be interesting well, to see what uh, Coach Belichick does. Two things: I think he's going to go with Zappy at least one more week. And I'm see, with you, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's look at Tyrod Taylor with the L.A. Chargers. Justin Herbert comes in, surprise of the ribs, and the head coach at the time, Anthony Lynn, says, "Nope, Tyrod Taylor's a starter. Tyrod Taylor's a starter. As soon as he's healthy, he's a starter. That's my guy." Two weeks into it, Herbert's playing pretty good. Tyrod, take your time. We don't want you to get hurt again. Yeah. Four plus weeks into it, four good games, five good games, uh, you don't have your job anymore, right? No. I mean, that's just the way it works. And that's football. You know, that's, that's football. And part of it, too, is 
what I think for quarterbacks, a simple analogy is it's baseball season, right? So it's Padres and we're all caught up in the National League Championship Series. But how many times in baseball, guys, do you see that double A AA or triple A pitcher come up? And he looks great until the third time the batter sees him, yeah. right? In the fifth inning. Or even if he has one or two good starts, by the third and fourth start, like, uh, yeah, they've got film on you in the book and what you throw, and, and now they're ready for you. No more surprises, well, it's right? Very, it's very That's similar, part of it. It's very similar to what we're talking about. But the, the other thing, position. there's one, and one other thing that I think is a big deal for me as a doctor. There's a physical side and there's a mental side. I think there's a tremendous amount of mental fatigue when you're the starting quarterback, and especially when you're the new starting quarterback. Because sure you're studying you're keeping up but you're like you're one play away everyone knows that but it's almost a relaxed nature like this is you're studying for the yeah. practice test but now you know you're studying for the real test and you study like crazy the first week and you're successful and you take half a breath and you got to do it again and you have to do it again and you know different guys you might do it for one week two weeks you might do it for four weeks but by that fifth week you're exhausted, it, it, mentally exhausted, right? I mean, it mounts up on you, and there's no question. And it, it uh, that's why I was talking like with a guy like Kyle Allen, and and not only that, you know, uh, people always say when they, um, I mean, I laugh. Let Russ cook. You know, we've heard that forever. And so, when when you're coaching good, you're doing what guys do best, and you keep giving them the opportunity to do those things. Well, if if you're not a complete player, the defense figures out what you're doing best. Now you got to find some other things to do, and sometimes you're not very good at them, or the quarterback isn't very good at them, or it's not something you're comfortable him running. So uh, it people people always say, "Well, open it up. We got to open up." Yeah, open it up, and the guy throws four interceptions, and you have no chance. You know, so right you, coaches have to find a way to you know manage that part of it and play special teams and play defense and find a way to give the quarterback the best opportunity to be successful. No, absolutely. Well, we could talk for a long time here. We got a couple of good snippets here and we went off uh, coach Turner. It's a pleasure to uh, be your friend, but it's so, such a pleasure to have you part of sports injury central six score as an advisory board member. I look, the well, I look at it. I look at it every week and I'm amazed uh, because there's, there's such great information and, and, uh, track record's pretty good right now yeah well the, a lot of it is because the algorithms that you participate in right because we just do the injury scoring but in terms of how to grade it how to do the clusters and apply what's going on it's not just me looking at injuries or our panel of doctors looking at injuries and saying this is what's going to happen it's there's a football component to it uh, I, we always say that the same injury on the same player is a different situation, right? And uh, it, it, whether the type of running back you are, a wide receiver, the type of player you are, or back to the Philip Rivers example, no offense to Lamar Jackson, but Lamar Jackson has that. He's not playing. He's just a different guy, right? Yeah. Different kind of guy. And even pocket guys, if you're not Philip Rivers or Tom Brady or whatever, without that full week of practice, I mean, uh, you're putting the the second string guy in because that full first full week of practice is so important. A guy like Philip or certain guys, they don't need that full week of practice. They know what to do. So that's what we do. We don't treat every injury the same. Every MCL is not the same. And then we apply the fo football algorithms that you help and, us and with. And the thing I love about it is not only the the injuries you have uh, that that are that are taken away or, or hampering a team, but then the weekly matchup. So you have a left tackle who's hurt and the backup's in there and you have a great rusher against him. That compounds it as compared to maybe a lesser guy or, or it's like, sure. I, I would say it's is. like Kansas City the other day with those DBs out, the last team you want to be playing is Buffalo with their passing game. So that, you know, uh, Kansas City could have probably got by against a team that doesn't throw the ball that well. Uh, it's just so happens they were playing Buffalo. Yeah, and, and as we say is also, you know, in terms of clusters, like, okay, everyone can know the quarterback or the star rusher or the left tackle's out. But 
if the right tackle's out too, how do you shift protection and which side do you chip on? You run out of people. So yeah. so there's where the clusters, or, or like the Rams we talked about, when it's three interior linemen, now who are you helping? I mean, you you run out of bodies in it's terms of playing together. It is complicated. George Kittle, remember, he would move over to help Trent Williams on that side. Yeah, on paper, Kittle should have had a great game, but in the, the fact was that he didn't go out into the pass pattern because he was always blocking. Same thing with Higby in the second half of the yeah. game. He no didn't targets, go out... No he didn't go out and he was blocking the whole time because he, they needed him yeah. to, to hold down the fort there. Uh, and the problem is now all of a sudden you have people helping and tight ends and all that. And the defense says, okay, they're going to keep all these guys in helping. We're going to double the two outside guys. You know, or, if, or, pretty or, soon there's nowhere to throw the ball. Or be more exotic in our blitzes because yeah. we know you're not going to hit the pattern, yeah. <laughs> you know? So we got an extra body to, to, to throw at it. So before it was like, okay, they, they've got someone covering Kittle or Higby and they're staying in. So now you've improved your odds, but if they know you're staying in and that guy comes too, you got yeah. the odds back to where he started uh, in terms of the numbers game coach. Uh, always great. And uh, thank you for all your help and uh, advice on the football side of things. And always good to uh, have you in the command center. We've got to have you come one Sunday, but you're always traveling and yeah, doing, doing well, fun we've been, things. But I'm, we're home now. And, and, uh, one of these times when Washington has a Monday night game, we'll be in. And, That's and, true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks coach. Okay. All right.